We're on problem four. Traditions clothing store is having a sale. Shirts that were regularly priced at $20 are on sale for $17. What is the percentage of the decrease in the price of the shirts? So what's just the decrease in the price of the shirts? Well, they've gone from $20 to $17. So the decrease is $3. We have a $3 decrease in the price of the shirts. So what is the percentage of decrease? Well, we're starting at 20, and we're decreasing by 3. So the percentage of a decrease, let me write it in a darker color, we're starting at 20, and we're decreasing it by 3, or we're decreasing it by 3 over 20. This is, this is the percent decrease, or the fraction decrease right there, and this is going to be equal to what? This is the same thing. I mean, we could divide it out if you, if you don't. Well, you you might be able to do that in your head, but just to kind of, in case you can't, let me just write it out like this. So if I divide 20 into 3, 20 does not go into 3. So 20, or you could say 20 goes into 3 zero times, and 0 times 20 is 0. And then I put a decimal point right there. 20 goes into 30. Maybe I should have done this. Let me do it over here. 20 goes into 3. 0 times, 0 times 20 is 0. And then let me put a decimal point like that. So I'll put a decimal there. And then I'll do 3 minus that 0. So I'll, let's say I get a 3.0 just like that. Maybe I shouldn't even write the decimal. Maybe I'll write a 30 like that. We have the decimal up here. 20 goes into 30 one time. 1 times 20 is 20. 30 minus 20 is 10. And then bring down another 0, this 0 right there. And 20 goes into 100 five times. 5 times 20 is 100. 100 minus 100 is 0. So 3 over 20 can be rewritten as 0.15. And the way, another way you could think about this is 3 20ths is the same thing if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5, is the same thing as 15 over 100. Right? If I multiply the top and the bottom by 5, which we can always do, this is the same thing as 15 over 100. So that's a way you could have done that in your head, saying, oh, that's the same thing as 0.15. And 0.15 expressed as a percentage is 15%. So our, the correct answer is B. All right, problem number 5. Which number equals? 2 to the minus 4 power. So this is a, bit of a little bit of review of exponents. 2 to the minus 4 is the same thing is as 1 over 2 to the 4th power. That's all a negative exponent does. It means 1 over, essentially, the base to the positive exponent. And this is just going to be 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And that's what? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So it's equal to 1 over 16. So that is choice C. Problem 6. What is 3 fourths minus 1 6? So whenever you add or subtract fractions, you have to find a common denominator. A common denominator, and a good common denominator, is the least common multiple of these two guys, or the smallest number that both of these denominators go into. So the smallest number that both of these denominators go into is, well, it's 12, right? 12, 4 goes into 12 three times, and 6 goes into 12 two times. So let's rewrite these fractions with 12 as a denominator. So tw something over 12 minus something over 12. So how do we rewrite 3 fourths as something over 12? Well, 4 goes into 12 three times. So, or we could say 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 times 3 will be the other numerator. You get 9 twelfths. 3 fourths and 9 twelfths are the exact same fraction. This is in, in kind of the simplest form, where you've reduced the numerator and denominator as much as you can. But this is the, a completely equivalent fraction. To go from there to there, you just multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. And the way you could think about it, 4 goes into 12 three times. So just multiply 3 times that numerator. Let's do the same thing with 1 6. 6 goes into 12 two times. So to go from there to there, we have to multiply the 6 by 2. So go from there to whatever this numerator is, we have to multiply that numerator by 2. So you stick a 2 right there. And now that we have a common denominator, this becomes a, a simple problem to work out. 
it is equal to, we have you know 9 out of 12 pieces minus 2 out of 12 pieces, or whatever we're talking about, or slices of pie. So that's going to be equal to 7 over 12. And that is choice C. Next problem. Problem 7. Problem 7. Do it in blue again. A salesperson at a clothing store earns a 2% commission. 2% commission on all sales. How much commission does a salesperson earn on a $300 sale? Well, they earn 2% on that. So, or you could say 0 0.02 of the sale. So you could just multiply 300 times 0 0.02. And you know, this is kind of the way to just do it. And I'll maybe give you a little intuition how you can do this on your head if you're constrained for time. But the, but the easiest way to think about it is just multiply 2 times 300, or 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 3 is 6. You could have done that in your head. 2 times 300 is 600. And then you worry about the decimals. So we have two spaces behind the decimal right here, right? We have 1, 2. So we're going to have to have two spaces behind the decimal in our answer. So we're going to have to have one, two spaces behind the decimal. So the answer right here is $6. And that is choice A. Now a way you could have done this in your head, you could have said, look, they make, he makes a 2% commission. So for every $100, he makes $2, right? 2% 2 is the same thing as 2 out of 100. So for every 100, he makes $2. He sold $300. So that's 300. So that would also be three times Two dollars per hundred or six dollars, whatever whatever uh, is easier for you to understand. That's what you should do. Problem number eight. I'll do this. I'm just in green. Some students attend school 180 of the 365 days in a year. About what part of the year do they attend school? And so the key word here is about, which tells me that they don't want an exact answer. They don't want me to sit there. I mean, if I wanted to, you know, they attend 180 out of 365 days. If I wanted the exact percentage, I would have to take 365 and divide it into 180 with some decimals, and I'll get some, uh, you know, I, I could work it out just like I did the decimal division in the past, but it would take some time, and they just want to know about. So what's 180 over 365 roughly? Well, what's 180 times 2? You could say, you know, 180 over 360, and I picked 360 because that's 180 times 2. That's equal to 50%. This is not that different than this. We just have a small change in the denominator, small relative to how large that denominator is. So the answer here is 50%. And you know, if they had a couple of other choices here, like 49% or 51%, then you would have to work this out a little bit, a little bit more detail. But it's pretty clear that 180 over 360, 180 over 365 is pretty close to 50%. It's nowhere near 18% or 75%. So you can feel pretty good about this answer. If 49% were one of the choices, then I would have to do a little bit more arithmetic right here with the division. Problem number nine. What is the value of 2 to the 6th times 2 to the 4th divided by 2 to the 5th. Now, you could solve each of these powers. 2 to the 6th is what? It's like 64 or, uh, you know, what's 2? It's, well, uh, 2, you know, you could, you could work out each of these exponents and then multiply them and then divide, but it would take you forever. So what they really want you to do here is use your exponent rules. So when you multiply two exponents and they have the same base, so let me write it this way, 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 4th, all of that over 2 to the 5th, what's that equal to? So let's just simplify the numerator first, so I'll keep the denominator the same. When you multiply two, when you multiply two, two exponents with the same base, you essentially can just add the exponents. So the same base is 2, so this is going to be equal to 2 to the 6 plus 4, or 2 to the 10th power. Now. When you divide exponents that have the same base, you subtract the exponent. So this is going to be equal to 2 to the 10 minus 5 power, which is equal to 2 to the 5th. And that's our answer. And we look at our choices. We don't see 2 to the 5th, so we're actually going to have to multiply it out. And so 2 to the 5th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
two times itself five times. That's what two to the fifth means. So what is this? Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So that is our answer, D.